Hey, this is Alex from the Good Old Boys Fantasy Football Podcast. To see more videos like this from the Good Old Boys, hit subscribe and support this independent podcast. Uh, the way that we were drafting on this, it was a 14 round draft on this single QB, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, one flex, one kicker, one defense special team. So a pretty standardized league for a starting roster. And then uh, yeah, a few bench spots on top of that one there as well. So pretty standardized draft, right? We tried to make it as close as we could to what most folks are going to see and, and going to encounter in their, uh, you know, in the draft room that night. And we base all of this stuff off of a half point PPR scoring, right? And part of the reason we do half point PPR scoring is one, we base all of our rankings off of a half point PPR. And two, it, it kind of lands right in the middle in between the standard scoring and full point PPR scoring. And you can kind of adjust back and forth and, and really, you know, see how some of that would, would shift and look and work based on your league there. But this will give you kind of the middle ground and you can adjust as you need if you're a full PPR or a standard scoring league there. When Alex had the one one started with Justin Jefferson, right? Um, for a large part, the consensus number, number one overall pick. Nothing wrong with that. Great way to start out any draft with, you know, arguably the best receiver in all of football. So I like that. Followed it up with Jalen Waddle. Jalen Hurts, Miles Sanders, Cam Akers, Tyler Lockett, Javante in the seventh. I thought that was really good value at the top of the seventh for Javante. Um, then Brandon Cooks, Zach Charbonnet, Kendra Miller, Alan Lazard, Greg Dulcich, and then kicker defense. Um, you know, I, I, I like this draft for Alex. I did, and I understand what he was doing there, right? You grab your, your top two receivers late because this was set up off of a two-receiver, you know, Start. It was a two-two-one-one format, right? Basically, two receivers, two running backs, one tight end, um, one flex is is what I mean by that. So I like this. He grabbed his receivers early, both high end wide receivers. Um, Jalen Hurts at the top of the third. It, it was one of the big three, right? And we see those big three going in the second round a lot in drafts. So he got him again at the top of the third round. A little bit of value there but nonetheless one of those top three guys that we talked about so he, he saw the tear right there and took his shot and then came over nicely with miles sanders and cam Akers, two guys who are going to see a lot of volume there's not real competition behind these guys in carolina and la respectively so you know are they top end christian mccaffrey no they're not but they will see a lot of volume and tons of opportunity is what we're asking for when you wait on running back a little bit later um tyler lockett third wide receiver slash flex play i really like this play for lockett i think he's being undervalued a little bit um, because of jsn um so i like the fact that you can get him as your third wide receiver and fill him in in any flex spot that you need javante williams i'm a huge fan there and then to round up kind of the rest of the bench, I, I'm good with Cooks and Dallas. Get a piece of that offense. Charbonnet, timeshare, right? He might be option two here at the moment, but he's one injury away from being the guy. Kendra Miller flashed in the last preseason game, right? We saw the ridiculous catch, and then he punched it in the end zone there for the Saints. Um, Alan Lazard, you know, you have a piece of that Jets offense and Aaron Rodgers' go-to guy. And then, you know, Greg Dulcich, Alex felt like he was the best tight end available, and that's how he rounded out his roster, and he's able to wait until the 12th to grab a pretty serviceable tight end, right? Like Dol Dulcich has uh, he has top 10 upside. Now, I'm not quite sure that he's not going to finish there necessarily, but the upside is there, and, you know, why the heck not in the 12th round take a guy with some upside and run for it? So, you know, this is this is our guide of, of – things to look for in this range for the 101. And I thought Alex did a really good job with this draft.